I'm Luan Mahitia, I'm a natural science curator at Birmingham Museums where we have a large fossil collection and one of our star specimens is here today. This is an ichthyosaur skull. It was excavated in 1955 from Shipston on Stour in Warwickshire by staff at Birmingham Museum and we've just received funding from the Arts Council Prison Fund and the Edward and Dorothy Cadbury Trust to get this conserved. So there are some issues with this specimen that we're going to get sorted out and that's what we're going to find out about today. So today we're launching this project and we're lucky to be joined by three experts in prehistoric marine reptiles. The first is Adam Stewart-Smith who is a paleontologist and also a paleo artist. And Adam you've got a picture of an ichthyosaur. This is what ichthyosaurs look like. Adam do you want to tell us more about it? Ichthyosaurs are one of many groups of marine reptiles that lived at the same time as the dinosaurs during the Jurassic period. Um, while the dinosaurs were living on the land, the ichthyosaurs were living under the water. Um, and they evolved a dolphin-like shape, um, a fish-like shape, and that helped them to swim efficiently in the underwater environment. So here with me is conservator Nigel Larkin who's going to tell us about the project that we're going to do on this ichthyosaur. Okay, uh, I'm a paleontologist and I specialise in the conservation and preparation of fossil material like marine reptiles. And this is a particularly interesting specimen because it's preserved in three dimensions, although in fragments, it's quite unusual. A lot of ichthyosaur specimens are fairly flattened. What's good about this one is that when it was rebuilt they found that uh, you could actually build it in three dimensions and get a really good impression of what the skull and lower jaw actually looked like. However, there are a few issues. Firstly, um, the varnish that they applied is quite thick and it's yellowed over time. You can't see a lot of the detail, which is a shame. So we need to clean some of the varnish off. We need to see where there's gap filler. There's bits of carved wood in here as well to give it support, but it's all sort of painted a similar colour. So if I clean all this off, the varnish and the paint, etc., we'll be able to see which bits of wood, which bits of gap filler, which bits of bone. And uh, we can then start looking at reconstructing a bit better this was reconstructed obviously after 1955, maybe in the late 1950s. They didn't have much access to information then as to what these specimens should have looked like. And they've got a few things wrong. There's a bone here that really needs to be rotated and moved back a bit. Um, the whole of this top part of the skull here, we think needs to go forward and up. Dean, who's a real expert in ichthyosaur anatomy, is going to help us with this and he'll explain in more detail exactly what needs to be done. So Dean, you're an expert in ichthyosaurs. I am, yeah. I'm actually a paleontologist and currently a visiting scientist at University of Manchester. And my specialism is ichthyosaurs, in mm -hmm. fact, specifically Jurassic ichthyosaurs like this specimen. Mm -hmm. And what do you think of this specimen? What's your first thoughts about it? Firstly, it's large. It's, yeah. a, it's a, quite a big skull. It's very interesting. Nigel pointed out there's certain uh, anatomical errors with the back part of the skull and some uh, portion of the front. But it's actually really, really interesting. It has mm. some, some really unusual features. Also, there is a forefin associated with this and parts of the coracoid and, the, and, and scapula, which are the pectoral mm. bones. Can you point to these? So, yeah, so this is, this is the coracoid mm -hmm. and the scapula. And then we also have the humerus, which is essentially the upper arm bone, uh, the, the upper arm bone in the, in the forefin. And then we mm -hmm. have all the individual digits. Mm. So it's actually a really interesting specimen. And, and yeah, hopefully it could end up being potentially something new, maybe. Mm. Who knows? So what do you think we might learn from conserving this specimen? Well, we'll learn quite a lot about the, the anatomy uh, of, of, the, of the skull and the general understanding of, of, of the elements of the teeth. For example, the dentition in the teeth here is really, really strongly striated. So mm -hmm. we can potentially suggest what animals this may have been feeding on. And what animals might it have been feeding on? Well, ichthyosaur stomach contents have been found in many, many specimens. Uh, and these have generally, they've inc included uh, cephalopod hooklets, so portions of squid have been found the mm -hmm. hooklets, have found the tentacles, uh, fish scales, and in fact, other ichthyosaurs. This is a big, a big school. Mm. The chances are this may, may have been quite a top predator, perhaps feeding on almost anything in the environment, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps even other ichthyosaurs. So can you tell us a bit more about what kind of environment this would have been living in? Well, during the Jurassic period, the area that we now call the UK was a shallow ocean surrounded by islands. Mm -hmm. In the ocean, the ichthyosaur would have been living alongside all sorts of different organisms, uh, fish and uh, squid-like animals, ammonites, uh, most of which are extinct today. Mm -hmm. um, and there would have been all sorts of animals living on the seabed as well, gastropods, shells and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, on the land, the dinosaurs would have been roaming around mm -hmm. and um, Dean might be able to tell us a little bit more about what sort of dinosaurs would have been around at that time. Yeah, so actually I've just written a book which has just been published, Dinosaurs of the British Isles. 
and that encompasses all of the remains actually found on the, in, the, in the British Isles. And in fact, during the Jurassic, we actually had stegosaurs, so those really mm -hmm. large, bit large bulky animals with the plates on the back and the, the spines on the, on the tail. We had sauropods, those with a long neck and a long tail, and we even had lots of theropods, big meat-eating dinosaurs. So they would have actually been on the, uh, on the land, uh, roaming, roaming along as these were swimming in the seas. So obviously we want to get the ichthyosaur back on display at Think Tank Science Museum. Um, do you think it will look a lot different when it's been conserved? It should look a bit more complete because some of the bones yeah. here have been broken off in the past, so the overall shape will be more complete. And we do have the forefin as well that will be back on display with it. Mm -hmm. We think that some of these bones might be slightly misaligned and when we clean all that up and remove the gap filler, we'll be able to get those much better articulated. Mm. So you're actually going to take these apart? Yes. And put them back. How are you going to make sure that they go back in the right place? Well, uh, we are going to try and discover what sort of species this is, mm -hmm. find any published diagrams and pictures there are mm. of this species and use those as a guide. But obviously you're looking at a 2D picture and mm. rebuilding a 3D specimen where some mm. of it's missing. I mean, one thing we might actually do, it might be worthwhile visiting other museum collections to see mm. other examples of what this ichthyosaur may be and have a, a better understanding of uh, the skull sort of anatomy mm -hmm. and try and figure out exactly where these uh, bits and pieces fit together. Mm. It'll be an interesting job but it's very worthwhile yeah. doing because this is a, you know, a spectacular specimen. It's a three-dimensional fossil and that's why it's so important and it, why it's such a good idea that these, the funders have actually found the money to get this conserved and rebuilt properly. And once it is rebuilt, it's then there is a resource for other scientists working on this type of animal to actually see what most of them would look like in three dimensions rather than the, the flattened mm. forms they usually get. So what's the next steps then? Pack it up again carefully, take it back, start cleaning it up, and when all the, all of it, all the muck and all the dirt and the varnish and paint has been removed, then Dean will come mm -hmm. and we'll work on it together, gradually taking these bones apart finding out what they are, exactly what's there, and reorientating them and putting them back mm. together. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks with Nigel and his conservation workshop looking at that painstaking process.